that's a super volcano that is a continent killer. And it blows every six to 800,000 years and everyone dies. Seismic activity has recently increased dramatically in Yellowstone National Park, with approximately 200 earthquakes recorded in the last two weeks. What might be causing this unexpected spike? Is it a sign that a significant volcanic eruption is about to occur? Are these shakings a sign from nature? And what does this mean for the surrounding neighborhoods in the park? Let's investigate these queries. About 200 earthquakes have struck Yellowstone in the past two weeks. Alarms have been raised by this strange surge. Although there have always been earthquakes, tremors, and hot geysers at Yellowstone, this latest rise is very concerning. There have been rumors of a possible large-scale eruption since a park official issued a warning. The geological activity of Yellowstone is thousands of years old. The area has been home to Native Americans for more than 11,000 years. In the early 19th century, mountain men made their first systematic explorations in the late 1860s. The park was first overseen by Columbus Delano of the U.S. Department of the Interior. From 1886 to 1916, the U.S. Army commanded the area, and in 1917, the National Park Service assumed management. With its 3,468 square mile area, Yellowstone is home to rivers, lakes, canyons, and mountains. One of its most well-known sites is Yellowstone Lake, which is one of the biggest high altitude lakes in North America and sits atop the Yellowstone Caldera, the largest supervolcano on the continent. There is always a chance of a big volcanic eruption given the recent seismic activity. Yellowstone is the center of the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, one of the last completely intact ecosystems in the Northern Temperate Zone. In addition to its breathtaking geological characteristics, from deep forests to uncommon creatures, a wide variety of plants and animals can be found in this vast wilderness. In 1978, Yellowstone was inducted into the UNESCO World Heritage List in recognition of its ecological significance. There are a lot of historically and architecturally significant buildings in the park. In Yellowstone, nearly a thousand native archaeological sites have been studied by researchers, illuminating the complex past of past civilizations. Below the peaceful surface of the park is a thriving environment. This place is home to hundreds of species of amphibians, birds, fish, reptiles, and mammals, some of which are endangered. The park's natural richness is enhanced by the large meadows and woodlands. The contiguous United States' largest and most well-known megafauna habitat is Yellowstone, which is home to iconic species including grizzly bears, cougars, wolves, and herds of bison and elk that roam freely. The nation's oldest and biggest public bison herd is located in Yellowstone Park. The park's yearly forest fires, which sculpt the terrain, are another example of the strong natural forces at work. The landscape was permanently altered by the 1988 fires, which had destroyed about a third of the park. Despite these difficulties, Yellowstone continues to be a refuge for outdoor enthusiasts, providing year-round hiking, camping, boating, and fishing. Our attention turns to Yellowstone's geothermal wonders. The Earth's fiery core fuels a remarkable array of geothermal activity beneath the park's surface. With approximately 10,000 Earth thermal features, including geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and fumaroles. Yellowstone stands out as a unique and dynamic natural wonder. Researchers found in 2011 that there are 1,283 geysers in Yellowstone National Park, about 400 to 465 of which are active annually. Nine large basins contain these geysers, and there are a few more strewn across smaller thermal zones. The majority of Yellowstone's geysers are rather modest, frequently exploding only a few feet into the air. Despite the fact that famous geysers like Old Faithful garner a lot of attention, an old active caldera in Yellowstone powers the hydrothermal system there. Mineral deposits like silica and travertine are left behind when subterranean water and volcanic heat combine to produce steam and boiling pools. Beyond its well-known geysers, Yellowstone is home to numerous additional geothermal wonders. The diverse terrain of the park is home to a multitude of unique thermal phenomena. Water and heat have produced a rich ecology that lurks under the beauty of the surface. In Yellowstone's thermal pools, microorganisms proliferate and produce colorful mats of algae and bacteria. 
These tiny organisms are vital to preserving the biological balance of the park and also contribute to its aesthetic appeal. Yellowstone's geothermal features are well situated where surface conditions and Earth's energy meet. The best places to find these natural marvels are in geyser basins, where precipitation and snowmelt sink into the Earth and experience extreme heat. Usually, these basins are located in valleys with flat bottoms that are tucked in between glacial remnants and old lava flows. The average boiling temperature in the geyser basins at Yellowstone's high elevation is approximately 199 degrees Fahrenheit, 93 degrees Celsius, emphasizing the extreme heat below the surface. Geysers such as Steamboat Geyser can shoot steam and boiling water up to 390 feet into the air when pressure builds up. The water cools quickly as it arcs into the air, protecting onlookers and neighboring boardwalks from the intense heat. Prehistoric Native Americans and Yellowstone's geothermal features may have had a close relationship according to artifacts discovered at Mammoth Hot Springs and other thermal sites. According to certain historical tales, the hot water was utilized by the first settlers for cooking and bathing. Stories of mystery and awe arose when 19th century exploration of the area got underway. According to Father Pierre-Jean de Smet, the Aboriginal people thought these places were spiritual battlefields. Locals cautioned the explorers not to enter the crater during the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1806, citing fear of the spirits thought to reside there and thunderous roars coming from within. John Coulter, a member of the Lewis and Clark expedition, ventured alone into Yellowstone and described its geothermal features as both mesmerizing and terrifying. Sulfurous hot springs bubbled and steam rose like smoke. Trapper Jim Bridger famously described Yellowstone as the place where hell bubbled up, a phrase that remains evocative today. Yellowstone's superheated brine, a saline concoction bubbling at nearly 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 204 degrees Celsius, is located well below the surface. Under extreme pressure, the geothermal activity in the park is powered by this brine. The Yellowstone Plateau's cracked and porous terrain allows the brine's hot energy to rise through the rock, creating the breathtaking geothermal phenomena that draw tourists from all over the world. Fascinating chemical reactions occur when fresh groundwater and heat from deep below combine. A strong mineral found in the crust of Earth called silica dissolves and re-emits, forming an intricate web of closed channels. This procedure is the start of an amazing journey that will take thousands of years. When the superheated water finally reaches the surface, it erupts in a spectacular display of steam and splendor. Geyserite and Sinter, the silent witnesses to this ancient dance, testify to the relentless passage of time and nature's enduring power. One of Yellowstone's most fascinating locations, the Norris Geyser Basin, is well known for its strong geothermal activity. This basin, which is close to the northwest part of the Yellowstone caldera, is home to a plethora of amazing natural formations. It is situated at the confluence of three significant faults, the Hebgen Lake Fault, the Norris Mammoth Corridor, and the ring fracture zone that was created during the early volcanic eruption of Yellowstone. The basin is extremely active and hot due to these faults, which function as nerve centers. The Norris Geyser Basin occasionally suffers abrupt and erratic activity. It can wake up suddenly and behave strangely for weeks. Water levels, temperatures, hues, and patterns of geysers erupting change during these occurrences. For instance, the pork chop geyser gushed water and steam nonstop in 1985. But in 1989, silica buildup choked it, causing a catastrophic explosion. Intense bubbling had returned to pork chop geyser by 2003, and activity peaked later that year. Parts of the basin had to be closed for safety because the temperatures became so high. The convergence of these three major faults is the cause of the disturbances in the Norris Geyser Basin. With the ring fracture zone from the old volcanic eruption added on top, it's like a pressure cooker about to explode. Captivating displays of nature's might await the hot water and steam imprisoned beneath the surface, ready to burst out. Abyssal plains beneath Yellowstone National Park are rapidly heating up. Underneath pressure increases as a result of this heat-producing steam. An explosion occurs when the pressure builds up too much. A popular location for eruptions is the Norris Geyser Basin, 
which is situated atop a large amount of geothermal activity. But the thrill isn't just caused by the heat. The rocks below the surface also have a big part to play. As hot water passes over these silica-rich rocks, it interacts with the water and picks up silica in the process. Similar to how trash clogs a drain, these particles can build over time and choke the vents of geysers and hot springs. Pressure builds up as a result of this buildup and eventually explodes, similar to the pork chop geyser. You might be wondering if authorities are cautioning about another blast. No, is the response. Instead, earthquakes pose a serious threat to Yellowstone National Park. According to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, there are 1,500-2,500 earthquakes in the area annually. These figures are based on data on seismic activity recorded from 1995 to the present, which spans three decades. The annual fluctuations in Yellowstone seismic activity are significant. For example, there were an incredible 3,427 earthquakes in 2017, compared to just 78 in 2011. What causes these earthquakes then? Tectonic motions cause tension to build up, which is when earthquakes occur. Yellowstone is situated atop a hotspot where intense pressure from subterranean volcanic activity and plate tectonic movement pushes against the Earth's crust. When the pressure builds up enough, the rock near fault lines eventually gives way, releasing stored energy in the form of seismic waves. As these waves pass through the Earth, they send ripples outward and cause the ground to tremble. Anyone in the vicinity may feel these waves as they reach the surface. It's like seeing a train pass by while standing on a shaky bridge. Because surface waves behave like unseen forces tugging and pushing at the Earth, they are especially disruptive. Similar to a sliding puzzle, this movement can cause the ground to slide, crack open, or change vertically or horizontally. Considering that most buildings are made to endure horizontal motion, rather than the unpredictable jerking and shaking brought on by earthquakes, this uncontrolled motion can wreak havoc on structures. The seismic behavior of Yellowstone is distinct. Although they are an inevitable byproduct of the active geological processes in the area, earthquakes serve as a warning about the strong forces at work beneath the tranquil surface of the park. In Yellowstone, earthquakes are not merely chance occurrences. They are essential to the hydrothermal activity of the park. Consider them as Yellowstone's natural means of maintaining a clear and efficient plumbing system. Small channels and fissures that supply hot water to geysers and hot springs may eventually fill with mineral deposits if these sporadic shakes didn't occur. It's interesting to note that some earthquakes may even increase this activity. For instance, the 1959 Hebgen Lake earthquake, a massive 7.3 magnitude event, and the 1983 Bora Peak earthquake, which measured 6.9, caused measurable changes in features like the Old Faithful Geyser, highlighting the interconnectedness of Yellowstone's geology and seismic activity. As nature's cartographers, earthquakes help scientists explore the subsurface geology that lies underneath Yellowstone's gorgeous exterior. Similar to how sonar is used to cruise the depths of an ocean, seismic waves can be used by scientists to study the Earth's depths because they move through solid rock and molten magma at different speeds. This aids in their comprehension of the complex structure of the caldera and magma chamber of Yellowstone. Let's examine June 16, 2017 at 6.48 p.m. in more detail. A critical juncture in the seismic history of Yellowstone is mountain daylight time. With a magnitude of 4.36 and an epicenter roughly nine miles north-northwest of West Yellowstone, Montana, this date saw the year's biggest earthquake. Nearby cities like West Yellowstone and Gardner felt the effects of this earthquake. The problem is that it wasn't a singular occurrence. This earthquake was only one tremor in a bigger seismic storm that was a part of an active swarm that was forming in the vicinity. On June 12, 2017, the Maple Creek Swarm began and it lasted until October, around 2,475. Earthquakes struck the area during these months with the epicenter located six miles north of West Yellowstone, Montana, and extending to the western boundary of the park. It seemed as though Yellowstone was having its own fireworks show underground. With almost 3,000 earthquakes in just three months, Yellowstone had the greatest earthquake swarm ever recorded in 1985. 
There was more seismic drama in 2009, close to Lake Village, and again in 2010 between West Yellowstone and the Old Faithful area, with hundreds of tremors resounding throughout the area during these swarms. What then is the cause of these earthquake events? The circulation of hydrothermal fluids beneath the surface of the Earth is responsible for the pressure changes and shifts that scientists ascribe to the Earth's crust. The Earth is moving in time with the natural rhythms, like to a volcano dance. Though we are able to monitor these swarms and examine their trends, pinpointing the precise location and timing of their occurrences continues to be a difficult riddle. You may question why, given that Yellowstone has been studied since the early 1970s, the range of normal seismic activity is based on data from 1995 to the present. The seismic network has grown and changed throughout time, which is the cause. There were fewer monitoring sites in the Yellowstone seismic network before the 1995. However, a substantial upgrade occurred in 1995 with a rise in the quantity of stations as well as the technology they employed, which included new techniques for data transmission. Thanks to this improvement, more earthquakes, especially those with lesser magnitudes, could be found and detected by scientists. Therefore, even though it could appear that seismic activity increased in 1995, it was only the result of better detection techniques. Earthquakes with a magnitude of less than 3.0 on the Richter scale typically pass unnoticed by most people. A magnitude of 4.0 or above is required to begin causing some structural damage, while a magnitude of 6.5 is required to cause the ground to break. Although they are uncommon in Yellowstone, earthquakes larger than magnitude 6 have happened in the past. Let's go back 57 years to see one of these occasions. The date was August 17, 1959, an otherwise ordinary night in the Madison River Canyon near Hebgen Lake, just west of Yellowstone. Around 250 visitors were tucked into their sleeping bags, scattered across cabins, resorts, and campgrounds. Just before midnight, the earth groaned. An earthquake jolted the canyon, sending shockwaves through the sleeping campers. The true nightmare unfolded next. A towering wall of water surged over Hebgen Dam, rushing down the river with unstoppable force. As if that wasn't enough, a massive section of the canyon wall collapsed near Rock Creek Campground, forever altering the landscape and the lives of those present. These earthquakes, according to Mike Polin at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, are a perfect example of how unpredictable Yellowstone is. He has seen it all. Earthquakes that rock. The earth for days, weeks, and occasionally even months at a time. A swarm beneath northern Yellowstone Lake in March of last year created havoc for several days, resulting in multiple significant 3.0 magnitude earthquakes. Just this week, there were two big 3.0 magnitude earthquakes, the largest of 2023, in a noteworthy swarm. As we've seen, Yellowstone National Park is not just a place of breathtaking beauty, but also a dynamic landscape shaped by powerful geological forces. From the smallest tremor to the mightiest eruption, the park's seismic activity reminds us of the incredible natural processes at work beneath our feet. If you found this exploration of Yellowstone's seismic phenomena fascinating, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. We'd love to hear your thoughts and questions, so drop a comment below and join the conversation. For more in-depth explorations of the world's most intriguing natural wonders, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Your support helps us bring more exciting content to you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next adventure. Stay curious and keep exploring.